Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Saturday. It's Daryl here. It is bright and freaking early, man. It's 5 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Okay, if you watch my channel every day, you might have noticed that uh, there's a big news story that I really haven't talked about at all. Every day I get up about 2 a.m. Every single day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, I get up about before 2 a.m. And I start going through all the news stories to find something, a story that uh, sparks my interest, that I think will spark your interest to do here on my YouTube channel. And I've seen this story over and over again. And part of me, I don't want to come across as insensitive, but I, I think I've been subconsciously ignoring this story. Uh, it's about Kate Middleton. If you watch my channel, you probably have seen. You know, I haven't, I haven't said that name at all on my channel yet. And um, I'm doing this video for those of you that I'm sure there's plenty of people that are watching this that have lost someone to cancer or they themselves have had cancer. Uh, a lot of the people, a good portion of the people of my, in my family that I've lost was to cancer. Okay, so <clears throat> Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales. I, I've seen this story. It's, let me see if I get this right. Because like I said, I've been kind of ignoring this, you know, because uh, I, I don't know if it's like an angry response. But it, it, it I, the gist of the story, I guess, is uh, the, pal the palace put out a picture that was doctored, that was uh, AI, making it look like uh, Kate was in better health than she was. And then just in the last day or two, Kate Middleton has come out and said, yes, that she's been diagnosed with cancer. She's had stomach surgery. You know, like I said, I, I've really kind of gone, you know, this story, at first I thought it wasn't just, it wasn't sparking my interest. But then... I realized it was deeper than that, that part of me was kind of angry about this. I just looked up this stat this morning. How many people every day are diagnosed with cancer? You know, and uh, 5,500, the link will be down below, every day are diagnosed with cancer. I didn't even, I just stopped right there. I didn't even look up how many people are lost or die each, each day to cancer. I, I didn't even look that up. And, and here, you know, like I said, I don't want to come across as insensitive, but I see this story in the news over and over again. I see it. There's like five, six, seven different versions of it on uh, TMZ. That's one of the sites, one of the media platforms that I go to to get my stories. Just, you know, Kate this and Kate that and Kate this, you know, and, you know, there's a lot of people, including, you know, I was nine years old, 1975, when my father who was 33 years old, passed away from terminal malignant brain cancer. I learned those words, terminal malignant brain cancer. I learned those, the meaning of each of those words when I was eight years old. Uh, I'm going to be, it's going to be a little harsh. It's going to be a little graphic, some of the stuff I'm going to talk about. Now, like I said, I'm doing this. I'm talking about this because I want, I know there's people out there that have lost people, loved ones, to cancer, like I have, you know, and uh, part of me feels just a little bit angry, I, I guess, I, you know, I hate to say that, I don't like saying that, but all this big hubbub, you know, this big fanfare, oh, Kate Middleton has said, she, you know, has had cancer, Kate Middleton has disappeared from the public eye, Kate Middleton, this and that, and this and that, you know, and uh, like I said, you know, I, I lost my dad. He was, from the time he was diagnosed to, to the time we lost him, it was, he was gone in six months. And it was a horrific six months for a nine-year-old boy to go through. So I, I think, you know, since uh, my family didn't get any fanfare like Kate Milton, you know, I'm doing this video for my dad and for all, hopefully, you know, and I, in the comments or if you feel comfortable i'd like you guys to speak up about the people you've lost uh this is our moment this is our time to, to talk about the people we loved that passed away from cancer like i said i don't, I don't want to sound insensitive but it, it, the way it comes across is is like you know she's the first person ever in history to get cancer oh my god you know kate middleton has cancer when 5,500 people every single day are going through the same thing as Kate Middleton. And, you know, what about them? 
Where's the where's the the concern and the outpouring of love and thoughts and prayers for those people? All right. Uh, like I said, I was nine years old. My father was thirty three years old. This has always kind of freaked me out because I'm taller right now. My dad was five eleven. He was a beefy, strong guy, forest firefighter, park ranger. Uh, he worked two or three jobs. Um, and uh, it, it kind of freaks me out that I am, you know, 20, you know, I'm way older than he was, ever was. You know, I'm 58. He never made it past 33, which is, is kind of weird in my head. The fact that, you know, I remember him being this big guy, you know, five, he was 5'11". He died, you know, like I said, when I was nine. And I, right now I'm six, I was 6'4". Six, I'm 6'3", six, 6'3". Three, six three. So I, I, right now I would stand a good four or five inches. Or, you know, he, he probably would have shrank if he was still alive. So he'd probably be like 5'10", you know. So I, I'd stand a good five inches above my my heroic, huge man of a, a, fa my, of a father, you know. And that's always kind of freaks me out, you know. Especially the, the age that he, he was going at 33, you know, and I'm 58. It just, it seems so backwards. It seems so wrong. All right. Uh, one of the very first things I remember, I was eight or nine years old and we were in the living room and I remember, I thought this was a game. I thought he was playing a game. He was standing and he was looking into the kitchen through the door and he was covering one eye and he was reading, looking at the numbers and covering the other eye. And I thought it was a game. So I stood in front of him and I was like, how do you play? You know, and I was covering my eyes and counting, you know. Now, this is the very first, when he first discovered that he had double vision, it was a tumor in the back of his head. Now, I remember, you know, kids hear stuff, even when you're eight or nine years old. I remember hearing, you know, one of the god-awful things that makes me so angry that I hate hearing. I cannot stay, I, I lose it. If I ever hear anybody, doctor or nurses, anybody, use the term vegetable. Because I heard them call my father a vegetable at eight or nine years old. And my father wasn't no freaking tomato. My father wasn't no freaking carrot. Uh, you know, I, I assume those are vegetables, not fruits. But you get the gist of this. You know, I, I have a very bad reaction to anyone using that term. You know, that was my dad. You know, he wasn't a vegetable. Uh, okay, so they used to rush me out of the house. He was, you know, he, he, I just watched him go downhill very quickly. He would have seizures, and my, my, my mother would rush me out of the house, and I'd be out in the front yard. She would not let me back in, you know, and that was kind of scary for a kid and when he would have a seizure, and then within 10, 15, 20 minutes, the ambulance would come and take him away to the hospital. Uh, one time, you know, once eventually he, you know, within a couple of weeks, he, he just stopped coming back from the hospital. My mother told me this later, many, many years later, when I was probably in my forties, and this is scary. Um, you know, having terminal brain cancer messed, you know, with his mind, with, you know, with having a the damage to the brain and he collected guns. I inherited his pistols. He had over 30 uh, rifles, shotguns, and pistols, and I inherited them when he passed away, but he had them then, and they were loaded. There was a loaded shotgun over and under in the bedroom that he always kept because we lived out in the middle of the woods. He was a park ranger, and my mother told me this later, that my father, when he was laying in bed having these seizures, he, he asked her to remove the shotgun and remove these guns and give them to my uncle to get them out of the house. Because he didn't know if he could live, keep going like this. And he was thinking about ending it, ending his life. And here's the really scary part. Uh, he didn't want us to live with the stigma of him doing that. So he was going to take us with him. Yeah, this is something, you know, but I, I, I know that wasn't my dad saying that. That was, you know... Uh, my mother told me, you know, my father never struck a woman. You know, he, he ingrained that in me, never, never strike a woman. But after he got really sick and he was in the hospital, he forgot my name. You know, I was nine years old and he, he couldn't remember my name. And apparently he struck my mother. You know, he was frustrated. He didn't know who she was. And it, it got, and it, it, that was, it got worse from there. Uh, I remember him just getting skinnier and skinnier and losing all his hair and just, you know, being half the man he was. You know, it just seemed like he, he was just withering to nothing. And I still remember the crayon marks. I call them crayon marks where he was having x-rays and MRIs 
and surgery where they would cut into his head and there was like you know magic marker crayon where to where they were aiming for I, I don't know but i remember i called them crayon marks you know and i used to hate seeing that uh like i said he didn't remember my name i remember him i talked about this in a recent video weaving baskets literally making baskets in a rehab in a ruin of uh, like a day room uh this is at the point where and this all this happened within six months I was nine years old, and uh, I, I hated that. You know, my father was the park ranger. You know, he ran a crew of like 30 men. He was in charge of the entire park. You know, I've, I saw him arrest people. I saw him, you know, arrest guys for jacking deer. I would go on patrols with him in his big, big, huge, uh, uh, what would they call it? Deuce and a half, uh, big army truck and they, up in the trails and stuff. Uh, you know, and then he was reduced to weaving baskets. Um, uh, in the end, the day he died, I was in third grade. And uh, I remember waking up that morning. And I was, you know, supposed to go to school. And uh, you know, I'm waking up and I see my mother walk past my bedroom door. And she's crying. And I knew right away what it was. You know, it was the day. I knew it was coming. You know, like I said, all this happened in six months. From complete health to gone in six months. And I knew he had died, you know, and I got to be honest with you, man, I cried, but I was so relieved because, um, you know, to me, he was already gone. You know, that point when he, you know, he didn't recognize me anymore, uh, you know, um, you know, it just withering away. I, I, the chemotherapy at that, even at that age, I swore to myself that uh, I, I would never, if I ever got cancer, I would just... You know, I, I would refuse chemo, I refuse everything, and I would just live out my days and then go on, on, my, own, on my own terms. Um, I remember thinking, to the, I was so angry with the doctors, you know, because I knew he wasn't going to get better. I heard them whispering in the halls. I heard them whispering about how my father was, you know, talking with my mother, how, they, how he was going to run out of his uh, sick days at the beginning. You know, how are we going to pay? You know, and plus we lived in the state house. He was the park ranger. So the house and everything came with the job. So I, even at nine years old, I realized, well, once my father's gone, there's no more job and there's no more house. Me, my mother, and my three-year-old sister will be out. No father, no house, no home, no job, no money, no, 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 nothing. These are the things that weighed on me at nine years old. Uh, in the next video, I'll talk about that shotgun that was in my mother's bedroom. He told me I was the man of the family, you know, because he knew he was going to die. And I was, I, it was my job to look out for my mother and my sister. And uh, about a year or two later, there came a day when at 10 years old, I needed to do that. And I'll talk about that in another video. This video is for all the other people that have lost somebody to cancer, somebody they love or have gotten cancer themselves. <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is me saying that my thoughts and prayers for you, you know, because uh, <clears throat> I, I just, I have a little bit of a problem with this big fanfare and outpouring of condolences and everything for, for this one person when uh, thousands of other people have to deal with this every day. Uh, quietly and uh, watch their loved ones suffer like I did. All right. I'll be back later with another video. Have a good Saturday.